Hey. <laughs> oh, before we even begin. I was gonna say, I look pink. Before we even begin. The light. It's a light. It's definitely the coloration <laughs> I chose today. Before we even begin, I'm gonna open something. Uh, it's not alcoholic, it should be. It really should be. I should have spent the time to make us some some potions of, what is it, what is it called? Potion of restoration uh, drinks? Potion of fucking sleeping. Nah, today, knocks you the fuck out. took every ounce of my energy. Why? I because it just just today, just the just because it was a Friday. Well, I know why it did and, for me, but well, I mean, we, I both I think we both have an idea why it was tiring for both of us. <laughs> hey, we have some new followers. Do you know that? I think you told me. You want to you want to read out their names? No. No. <laughs> I know how you want me to read out their names. Uh, all right, I'll read out the names. <laughs> uh, Rage Skirt, thank you so much for following. Nerdy Drunken Monkey Goblin. God, that's a fucking great name. There's no numbers in there too. I feel like I need to wear my glasses because the light on the screen. Uh, and TF Not Well, thank you so much, guys, for following. They may have followed during one of our recaps or not recaps, uh, reruns. Yeah. Um, for anyone who's watching now who may be watching in a rerun or in a vod. Uh, we stream every Friday and Saturday. Fridays are at 8 p.m. Saturdays at 2 p.m. And then occasionally when we do have one shots, which were which are every other month, uh, we stream those on Sundays. So that way you have a full full amount of content, and you can also follow us on our social channels, which also have a bunch of content too, as well as a vote game that you guys can participate in. I feel like I'm much taller than you. I look like a fucking Amazon in this angle. You are sitting straight up. I'm sitting so much back right now. <laughs> I am so relaxed. I'm in my jammies. Yeah, I don't I'm, want to be in my jammies. I am in my jammies. I, we got a fan off to the side. I have a, a soda. It has apparently zero calories. Are these zero calories and zero sugar? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah, they don't taste like it. They like don't. I, we've gotten kind of addicted to these things. So before we get into um, a class I would love to talk about, uh, let's talk about the last session. I feel like my shirt's cut enough because of my hair. You just seen a tail. <laughs> Did we ever announce that you have red hair now? Uh, I don't think so. It's I, you can't really see it from there because it's in the under layers. Maybe maybe tomorrow when you're underneath your your own personal light. Yeah, you, no, you see it on Saturday stream. Mm, mm. Yeah. So let's talk about. I have to stand over session there. nineteen, <laughs> which is which is the last <laughs> session we left off in. Session 19. Uh, a few cool things that showed up and a few, uh, a little bit surprises for both you guys as well as a guest of ours. A few cool things and cool people. Yes. We had some really cool people. We had, uh, Tom on. Yo, I think Tom's probably like, I'm asleep, dude. Tom is definitely- Right now. <laughs> They're three hours ahead of I us. Did, I did talk to Tom real today and he did tell me that he had a weird sleep schedule. He goes, sometimes I am- Well, no, he told me that he's a very morning person. Huh. So he's, he'll probably be up like at- uh, I would say 5 a.m. for us. You know? Yeah, but that's only like 8 for him. Yeah, that's true. But like, he's, he's a morning person. I get up at 7, like, like I wake up. I don't get up because I don't want to get up at 7. <laughs> I wake up at 7. Man, that means when we end our one shots, he is. It's, it's like 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock. That's not too bad. No, it's not too that's bad. not too bad. We're not that. We're not that horrible, right, Tom? We're not that bad. We don't keep you we're up that late. We're always like paranoid. We're like, like could we go another we're hour? Like, we're like, you okay? You okay? You okay? Yeah. It was, <laughs> because we've experienced that too. Where we're just like, can we please stop the game? We've we've gone on for a very long that's, time. That's because of reasons though. Like, you know that like, Stephen Temple and us for like, we went crazy long ass sessions when we had We used to go 12 game. hour sessions. I how, think me and Temple were cool. I feel like Steve was like, are we done? How do... Unless how, we were fighting something. I don't... You know, the funny thing is... It didn't feel like 12 hours. It didn't feel like 12 hours. <laughs> but now that I'm writing se uh, our campaign here, I'm trying to understand how the hell I had 12 hours worth of content. Because you were quarantined and you couldn't go out. I mean, not that we go out now. But, I, but like, yes. I don't know. I mean, how, and now I'm like struggling from week to week. Not necessarily. I have some things planned out for you guys. You but... normally write like a couple sessions at least. I do. I think 
I don't know, maybe because our characters are more complex this go round. That's definitely it. Your characters are definitely more complex. Because last, like I said, our at home campaign was one of the few campaigns where we all weren't like super tragic. It was more like we all had a like a, a reason. Mm -hmm. Like, and I don't mean like oh, like I guess we didn't have tragicness leading up to the reason. I think the only one that semi did it, but like only really hinted at it was uh, Steve's character, mm -hmm. like his brother and all that. But like we didn't even dive into that. <laughs> we didn't even end up diving into it. And yeah, so... you guys were just simple tools that were being used to do something and now you're actually characters with like backstories and tragedies and and like small things that need to go through but session 19 yeah no. session 19 <laughs> uh i think the way we began the game is that you arrived at revine yeah tom flew out of a uh you arrived at, you've right uh, arrived at revine which is a town full of debauchery of chaos and freedom you know you want to get drunk in the in the streets Vegas. There are no city guards that are going to come to you and go, sir, you need to sober up or you need to go home. Let's put you in the paddy wagon. Nope. They're going to let you walk by, make out with a prostitute, and walk into a hotel. They don't care. How old are you? Hmm? You said paddy wagon. <laughs> That's actually a term. I know, but like, I am I know that. Cause or the my, drunk tank. My parents are old and like my family's old, so therefore I use like old words. The drunk, t drunk tank. The drunk tank. The drunk tank. <laughs> Is an actual term that me and you, it was it was our thing that we would say. Because that's what it's called. When they have a checkpoint and they're like, they put you in the... But you they, put they you in the... They don't put you in the paddy way. Mm. <laughs> well, anyways. <laughs> so you arrived at Revine yeah. and uh, explored a little bit, but uh, had a destination to check out one of the random bars to maybe see if there's a bit, you know, any local gossip. Generally, most people gossip at a bar. What's that type of, type of filming style where like something happens and then somebody's talking around in the background, like they're narrating what's happening to them? I feel like that's what would have happened it's like, to Tom. It's like a third person narration thing. Yeah, but like it's you. Oh, second person. It's you though, it's, it's a second person. It's a second person thing. That's why it's just like, and there I was flying out the window. Yeah. <laughs> Second That's person, how I feel. first person is you dictating what you're doing there. Second person is you dictating what's happening to you, and third person is someone dictating what's happening to you. So, yeah, second person. So basically, Tom is <laughs> throwing out the window, uh, a glass window at at a local bar that you guys found, and fighting a familiar face to you guys. That dick. Black skinned, like like ebony, uh, and. Easily. And golden horns reaching backwards with golden eyes. Vargo, I'm loving Vargo, by the way. I absolutely love this this character. Vargo is just a pain in the ass. I he's, mean, not that other people aren't pains in the asses too, but you know. He's such a pain in the ass and I love him for it. He's not even just a pain in the ass to us. He's a pain in the ass to everybody, because including his employer, apparently. It's really funny because I was looking, because we obviously know he's a blood hunter. I mean, out of character, in characters, you guys have no clue what a blood hunter is. I mean, we don't know what a blood hunter is, but we can probably assume at the very least blood magic, or he uses blood somehow to do his attacks because he keeps fucking cutting himself. Yeah, or he like so... he reaches into a wound and he pulls out blood and uses it as a thing. Yeah, absolutely. That's something you would know. But it's one of those things, like, even as a magic user, you're like, he's using blood? It's not a very common thing. Yeah. And so... I like the idea that his blood hunter sub trait gives him the ability to do an ethereal step, uh, like at will. And I think there are some limits to it, but enough where I read it and I was like, well, is it enough to get away from a lot of situations? And it is. It's a very powerful feat. Not to kill critical role for anybody, but I mean, if fucking Molly Mock has that shit, or uh, Lucian has that shit, <laughs> they don't fucked. <laughs> Yeah, I have to look up, I have to look it up what Molly is because I know there's different subclasses, but Molly. I thought he is a blood hunter. Yeah, but sub subclass. Mm. And um, Vargo is basically a subclass. You know, he's he's picked a certain subclass that allows him to ghost step. You know, so he's he's a very hard person to put down because he's technically not using a spell. He's using an ability. Mm-hmm. You can still dispel it or counterspell it because it's it it stops a magical effect, but I mean, 
it's going to be the thing where you're like, all right, we got him captured. Do you think he's used it yet? I don't know. And then... <sighs> really wish I had counter spells sometimes. I haven't mm. played a character that has counter spells. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> play uh, sorcerer, warlock, or bard. Well, I have warlock. I've played a warlock, but mm. it was only for the one shot, so they didn't get to the level where it's like counter spell. Have you ever thought about if we ever get to set like a campaign two? What you would play as? An official two. An official two? No, I mean, like, I have a range of characters, but I always feel like I don't pull from them because it doesn't fit, like, the story or where we are or... You like, don't you don't choose your characters preemptively. You wait until you hear about the, mm -hmm, the terrain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's good. I like that. Well, because that's what you did the first time, so now I'm just, like... I don't want to just... I think it's more fun to create, even though I wanted to slap myself this go-around, like, really, really hard. I wanted to slap myself... <laughs> because none of my past characters had like family and I was just like I go if I, we ever streamed a campaign I was like oh I'm gonna make a bunch of uh, siblings yeah. and boy did I make, they all had like their individual traits and then I had my parents and then I was just like by the time I was done I like literally wanted to cry I was like I don't want to do but this no more it, it paid I mean it, honestly it pays off once you're it done it paid off because like now you've you met some of your family or at least the party has met some of your family um, because the other half are like away your father and your older sister are somewhere else mm. and you know, they've met a good chunk of your family now, and they all have different person. You know, one is free going and just she's, like, just free, free, to, all right. free to the wind. The <laughs> other one is very much sarcastic and is like, I gotta get something done. Do you open or not? Uh, and of course, your mother, who is basically a very, very typical mother, uh, who I honestly, when I, when <laughs> typical I, typical mother. She's a very typical, you know, like. Well, what is that supposed to mean? Sorry to all you moms out there. A typical mother, you know, like, is the one who goes to you and goes, like, darling, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. And now I'm going to yell then, at you. <laughs> I told so you. That's like a typical our mother. I told you not to go outside, <laughs> but uh, you did it anyways. You yeah, know, like, I don't know. Caring, about that. I think but, I might have got the slap first if I was, <laughs> was my mother. For reals. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah. So you met Duma, who is a red-horned, red-skinned tiefling. I didn't expect us to fucking align so well, at least character-wise. I love the character of Duma. Yeah, like, I, di I didn't see that coming. I was, like, really surprised because I was like, oh, fuck, he aligns with Vera, like, a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, <laughs> and I wasn't expecting that. Do you realize that he is a mixture of all you guys? You know, you, you know how so he does have a bit of a of, of a Vera backstory. Mm -hmm. You know, he's lost a family member recently, very recently, mm -hmm. probably more recently than you. Oh well, yeah. Um, and he is going through grief in a different way. However, he is definitely uh, associated with a bunch of shady types because where he lives, he sees everything. You know, he's a bouncer at a bar. <laughs> Savannah, <laughs> but he's also kind of built like a rock, you know, because when when uh, Tom was making his character, he's like, my second highest stat is going to be strength. And I was like, you're going to be a strong bard? And he goes, hell yeah. I was like, hell well, yeah. It makes sense, kind of like for his character, how, not how he plays him, but like where he is. It's like, mm -hmm. you can't really be... You, it's, you have to be super smart or super strong. It doesn't benefit you to be pushed around in that town, really. Yeah. And so I was like, he is kind of a mixture between all of you guys and a little of his own stuff. Because he's like, not a lot phases me. You know, I've seen people throw up on each other, you know, and I've seen debauchery and, you know, you can insult me and I don't care. I was just laughing when I told him, I was like, want to go for a ride? And he's like, I, was like, I just need a yes. <laughs> and when you did that, he, like, he arrived, he was like... <laughs> I, I love Duma because he's not a person of like super hyper personality. He is controlled. Yeah. He's very controlled where you like you do something and he's like, what? What happened? <laughs> and then you turn around and you, he's, you're laughing and smiling and he's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love Duna, Duma. He's, he's a really funny character uh, in his own right. And I like the fact that throughout the story, you know, uh, Rolly is definitely like, like almost like treating him like a bro. 
Well, because I mean, he's had to deal with girls this whole fucking time. Yeah. And like, we've told him, I was like, you really prefer, like in character, would you really prefer sisters over brothers? And he keeps telling us yes. But I'm like, you've had to deal with our asses this whole time. I was going to say, I don't know how he, I, I know some dynamic between him and his brothers. I mean, the little one he's close to, but I think just because he's little and he, character-wise, he feels the need to protect the little one. Yeah. But like, I'm just like, I was like, dude, I think we've done more shit to you as quote unquote acting like sisters than your brothers. <laughs> so, so I'm just like, you sure, you sure you really want us as sisters? Well, he doesn't have a choice right now. Yeah. But uh, you guys met up with Duma, had a, uh, a night at the, you know, sort of a night out. Dude, I forgot. Rolly finally got laid. Rolly, hey. well, <laughs> oh, that's right. We did, hey, beardy. we did jump on the fence that Rolly finally got laid. I mean, we all have bets, though. We all have bets that we were like... Isn't that like, where we left off? We were like, is he... Yeah. We were all going to sleep. And I have to send a message, but I said I was going to do that before I go to sleep, but okay. we faded out. All right. Good to know. Good to know. But I think I did send one message to somebody. You sent a message oh, to, to Lily. Lily. But I guess I want more. And you, she basically told you I'm a little I'm busy. busy right now. I don't give a shit if she's busy. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know Amber said hello, but what's going on, Beardy? <laughs> Hopefully you enjoyed the uh, anime channel that we had for just a brief moment in Newegg. Vera, uh... For, it feels for April Fools. Oh, yeah. Vera was, uh, real busy living her life until she got her fucking fiancé killed, so I don't give a shit if she's busy. <laughs> I'm busy, too. <laughs> anyway. So, you guys... Obviously fought Vargo, and then had a night, and then in the morning you were greeted with a package. A brown package with, uh, and as you opened it, it had two things. It had, a, it had a, a note, and it had a golden horn, a familiar golden horn from a familiar asshole tiefling. Yeah. Um, and it basically said, meet at the copper tree, which is a, a little, sort of like a, a fuck you to the citizens of Revine, like, oh, you want trees? Here's your fucking tree. It's shiny. It's shiny. <laughs> and I like how Doom was like, yep, it gives off 0% of oxygen in the space, 0% fresh air. But it, it's, it's shiny. But it's shiny. Uh, and upon arriving, uh, a bang was heard, and the tree started to vibrate due That's, to an impact. I thought you said like a firework. Yes. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a thing. There's a thing that, that uh, the shadow, as we call him, like a has. A flashbang. A very yeah. I I when I built, uh, Arthen. Ah, I gotta look at my notes. Arthen, I think it is. I think it, I, I think I wrote down Arthur, and then he said Arthen. Yeah, it's Arthen. <laughs> Arthen the Shadow, uh, who is a small gnome individual, or halfling. I gotta check my notes. Regardless, even uh, Savannah was like, "Fucking small people." No, I said that. Oh. I said that, and then she echoed my response because I was like, "Why is it always the little ones?" You know, what? I, you know what I always think? I, I, I don't gravitate towards the small ones, but I guess I am doing it subconsciously. Because yeah, I'm... but like, last campaign, the little ones were helpful. This time, the little ones are assholes. I feel like <laughs> I, I do that because a lot of people go, oh, halflings, oh, gnomes, they're such small guys. They're like three feet tall. They can't do anything. I mean, outside of D&D, &D, there's a lot of people that have rational fears of fucking, like, little garden gnomes because there's a lot of movies and lore about them coming to eat you when you're asleep. So, no, I don't. Mm. But <laughs> well, I mean, we were to I'm, factor that into D and D. That's logical. I'm just saying that if, if you walked into a dark alley, and there were you started to walk halfway, and you looked behind you, and there was a Goliath standing, and then you looked in front of you, and then there was a little gnome, you'd probably go, "I want to run towards <laughs> that gnome and kick that fucker and keep going." But I wanted to. Sort I feel of, like Amber would hesitate on the gnome because I'm like, "Why the fuck are you with?" But Vera I would just be like. <laughs> I, I wanted to play against the stigma because I was like, let's make the small characters like, they've got power. They control a lot. It's like that mouse in Zootopia. That's uh, like the godfather. He's not a mouse. No, he's, he's a, a something. possum. No, he's a little mouse. You mean the little possum? Uh -huh. He's not a possum. He's a possum. Look it up. All right, he's... It's not a possum. All right, we're doing this. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. What do I get if I win? I don't know. All right. Well, I get something. What do I get if I win? You get something. <laughs> it's 
not a possum. It's a totally a possum. Zootopia. Godfather. Godfather. He's not a possum. He's like a little dainty mouse. Uh, he's an Arctic shrew. <laughs> What? He's a little mouse. Is that what a shrew is? Yeah, they, he, look, they look like little mice. He looks like a possum, though. He's just got bushy eyebrows, bro. He's not a possum. Fuck. <laughs> I'll give you advantage on your first roll. <laughs> oh, how about I get to choose the roll I get advantage no. on? No. Attack no. roll, at least? Nope. Man. Yep. What if it's like you gotta roll to find where the bathroom is? Well then don't don't look for a bathroom. <laughs> Plain and simple, bro. <laughs> I don't know why you thought he was possum. I honestly he lit she literally picks the daughter up, like and I don't remember why. <laughs> I thought they were possums. Uh so you met um Arthur in the sh uh, the shadow. The shrew you were gonna the shrew. <laughs> That's that's a critical role reference. Um you met Arthur in the Shadow. Huh. Who wanted to give you Vargo up, like wanted to like present him, be like here, him, here is him beaten and bloody, ready for you to take him. That was my best line though. I was like, you give gifts to people you like, so why the hell are we so special? Well, it's because you you pretty much beat up one of his his lieutenants. I wasn't that I... hard. <laughs> it's pain in the ass. Well, you technically you beat him, but you didn't kill him. Almost. I missed my fucking hit. Otherwise, I would have. That's true. <laughs> Which hit? He didn't want to. I I was thinking about it for a long time, and I was like, if Vargo ever meets these guys again, uh, he's gonna be super smart now, or enough where he's gonna go. All right, if I can't kill you in the first few rounds, I'm out of here. So he's basically gonna be a pain in the ass. You know when you first gave him the second horn, like in that room we were captive in i didn't think horn like oh you thought like a like a I felt like horn. yeah <laughs> and i was like i was like gonna ask out loud can you play it but then i heard tom go does it look familiar and i'm like like an instrument you actually did say can you play it or like that and i was me mm -hmm. i don't didn't I, say well, that well you could rewatch it you did i don't think i did we'll still see i think i said it in my head because i didn't ask we'll see i'll bet again <laughs> Okay. Double or nothing. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. We're not doing that. <laughs> We're not doing that. I was like, I know I thought about saying it, but I didn't say it. I let him talk because he found it. And, and yeah, and so uh, Duma, Tom's character, I didn't expect him to do that. I kind of had like maybe an inkling that maybe he would go that way. So I kind of planned a little bit because he was like, all right, well, I want Bale Frost, you know, the white dragonborn who killed my sister. And I knew right away that he was going to ask for that. And even the shadow would. Because he would have looked you guys all up. Um, I feel like I'm doing... Not, not to you guys, but I wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> well, any smart businessman knows who he's going to have a meeting with. You know? And the shadow is definitely a smart businessman. And that's the way I built him. And so he would have definitely gone, Alright, well I have records. Well, let's take a look. Why do I feel like this is like the gentleman? type of deal like you don't want to dislike the guy but you know he is not exactly the purest of the pure yeah I mean I guess so he definitely isn't the purest of pure he deals with lots of lots of shit um, but he definitely wants to keep his friends close and his en enemies closer and maybe sh switch him over if he has to well like we kept saying the whole fucking episode we were like the enemy of my enemy is my friend talking shit are we <laughs> Not Are we? Really? Oh. What's wrong? He has his fits. Huh? <laughs> no, cute. they they use the coins. Oh. Are you? No, not about you. We were telling. Uh, oh, we did say that you got laid finally. We did say. <laughs> we're back. We're by the way, when we start the episode tomorrow, uh, Steve, we are gonna have to roll something to see how well you did. Oh. <laughs> He read to her all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not there. All right. Who had who had reading? <laughs> no, he went up to her and he was like, "Do you know magic? Can you teach me?" Yeah. And she's like, "I know magic." Yeah. The 
part of a seduction. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> We're old and corny. <laughs> Isn't that a thing? Isn't that a show or, or like a book? Why do I feel like I, we didn't make that up? That's a thing. That's a saying, art of seduction. Is it just a saying? Oh no. I'm pretty sure it's a book somewhere. Oh, someone Google it for me. Don't Google it. That's why I'm asking them to do it. To do it. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, we warned Tom though. I mean, at the, I think we, I warned him off camera. I said, just so you know, Steve likes to break the DM and the rest of us too. <laughs> Temple says it's a book. I knew it. You saw that in Borders one day. I don't know. Dude, that's been a saying as long as I've like known it's a saying for years. So, you guys, so so you, the party finally met, you know, uh, the Shadow uh, struck up a deal. Hey, Temple. Uh, you guys struck up a deal. Is He's super, he's definitely upset that kingdom troops are in his town. And you can probably get a sense that he's kind of kept it that way, that they're out of town for a reason. Probably because of all the shit that happens in there. And he understands that you guys are strong enough to take on one of his men. So he's like, maybe I can employ you guys to do some reconnaissance on my behalf. And in exchange, I'll pay you all depending on what you give me. And for Duma, I'll maybe let it slip where Balefrost is. I felt bad for Tom. Because I really thought we were going to have to do his thing first. But it's like, we're going to do your thing, but you, as a contingency, you have to do my thing. And I didn't make it that way. You did. Oh, I, I thought about it for a very long time. So that's why I was just like, well, guess we're doing my thing first. It's it's a complicated situation when it comes to guest players. Uh, mainly because I want them to come back. Yeah. So I, and it depends on what the character, get, what the player gives me. Because then I have to think, all right, well... They gave me three concerns or two concerns or two things that they're going after or just a singular thing. How do I expand that? How do I make that so it's a, you know, you don't just get it. Yeah. They have to also fight for it because even though they're a guest, they probably have a little more leniency in my eyes. Um, like they get they get to skip a lot of things. Yeah. They still even though he got like, excuse me, a ton of lore and like one felt. Yeah. <laughs> like, even though they even even though guest characters have a ton of leeway and they get to jump ship, they don't have to like roll for travel like you guys do. They still have to fight for it. Uh, so if he wants Bale Frost's, you know, information, he's gonna have to do something for the the shadow. And ironically enough, that's what you guys want too. I'm gonna apologize now, but I mean, I'm gonna have to warn Tom because Tom has not seen any of our episodes where I cry like a big ass baby. Just be prepared for that shit tomorrow. I'm not prepared for it, but <laughs> given uh, my background and what this arc is right now, I totally expect it. And it's so funny, and I was thinking about this when I was getting ready, because you were like, oh, you're basing, or you asked me this at the beginning, like, you're like, when you get upset, you're basing Uthiel off me, and I'm like, there's actually no connection to you when I think about that I just feel like extreme empathy for the situation like if I were living that situation I'd be like man that's how I'd fucking feel so like again Steve and Temple are like the the grace because I was never gonna fucking cry on stream and look what fucking happened but and now, it just ha now it just happens now every it other just episode fucking happens. just happens every other episode it's heartbreaking so I'm just like I go I I don't make a connection to you when I'm like that. Mm. It's really weird. But I guess just because I've lived out a funeral, I've lived out going through those motions where I'm just like, You can call upon that. Fuck, memory. man, that's so fucked up. And then I just feel like shit that whole <laughs> thing. And I'm just like, excuse me. Um, oh, I'm off camera trying to stop the tears and my snot. <laughs> my apologies. Yeah, it was never a question of if, just when. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I guess there's a lot of emotions I want to instill within my players. Obviously, yours has a very tragic, I feel like compared to the rest of the players, maybe a bit overly traumatic. And you know what's funny? When I made her, I didn't think about that. I didn't think, oh, I'm going to cry on camera. I didn't think, oh, I'm going to get really upset. I didn't think none of that. I was just like, that's a good story. Let's go with the character. <laughs> and then I, 
And then we started to play, and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> I, I think for Savannah, the biggest, the biggest uh, feeling I wanted to give to her was definitely, like, a sense of maybe, like... This is gonna be a lot more than what you signed up for. No, uh, well that for when it came to the the to Richard uh, Richard Thogmore, that was definitely like a thing. Like, holy fuck, what did I do? <laughs> Hold but on, no. let me go read my contract again. <laughs> Where but the fuck I think did it say this? I think what I'd like to do, and what I was trying to do, maybe I haven't done it yet, or I'm not doing a good job of it, is definitely a feeling of paranoia, because she's like, oh shit, another small person. And, oh, I think you you served that well. And it's like, do I? Okay, this is person person different. And every single time you guys run into a cult or some sort of organization that is like definitely evil, I feel I like to think that Savannah is always like. I think it. I mean, I don't think it's so much paranoia, and I mean Temple's in chat, so she can tell me yes or no. But I think it very much upsets her every time she sees it. Mm. Like why again? Why again? Why again? Yeah. Like I don't understand like why these people keep doing this to nobody that really deserves it. I mean, you know, we might meet somebody that fucking deserves it. We just haven't yet. <laughs> so you know, both Steve's character is very interesting because he's very goal driven. He doesn't really have like a tragic past. He more has a goal oriented mindset. He however, does. We're slowly digging it up. However, as we go. <laughs> I have been, I have been doing plenty of things in the background, and uh, I don't think you guys have picked it up, uh, picked up on it yet. But there are definitely some things. I've picked up on it with the fucking dreams you're giving the dude. What does it mean? What does it mean? I mean, we kind of only touched on it, but. I mean, by accident, I think the last time I cried on camera, I made Dimple cry, and I was just like, uh-oh, that's not what I meant to do. I was like, because Mike's like, I'm going to make all of you all cry, and you've already done it with me, and then I was like, Oh, I've given up that, that goal now. Well, you didn't make Temple do it, I did it. I gave up on that, I gave on that. I was like, I'm sorry. I was like, oh, man. By the way, I had to cry on camera. You don't look like you're, uh, uh, crying though you leave my imaginary mom alone <laughs> you don't look like it like you just get flustered so like normally i have like this weird thing and i don't know what it is like if it's somebody i legitimately care about if i see you cry i'll just start crying it's just how i am but like oh. you just look like you turn red so i don't assume you're crying <laughs> i have a freak hair you have a freak hair i have a freak hair you always have a freak hair pull pull back here You'll see. Uh, it. Yep. There's like an extra long, like. Yep. Like I went to the barbers. And they forgot to cut. This. And they forgot to cut one little hair back here. I'll fix it later. Oh my! I was. I don't know. I was just sort of pulling at my hair a little bit because I. You was, get them down here and in your eyebrows. You I have was, like a two-inch long eyebrow. I was hair. fidgeting a bit and I felt <laughs> like I was like that feels extra long. <laughs> How did I find that? All right. Well, I now know where it is. So, He's a cat. He gets distracted. It's very weird. <laughs> I have to move with my hands. My hands have to be doing something. Um, so let's let's wrap up a little bit about the last session talk. So you guys have prepare for traumatization. You guys have tomorrow. you guys have accepted the shadows. Yeah, uh, well, request. yeah, it just kind of goes hand in hand. By the way, if you would have denied, he would just be like, okay, well, I can't give you the gift, and since you want to do my thing. Our business is over, you know? I thank you for, uh... I feel like he would have kept our shit. <laughs> oh yeah, he definitely would. <laughs> he would have been like, alright, bye. That's why I was like, fine, but uh, you're giving me my shit back. You could, you could, you, <laughs> you definitely had a choice. You could have definitely been, no, we're not going to work with you. And he would have been like, alright, well, I'm going to go and keep your stuff. Goodbye. And you would have been alive just without any weapons. I mean, Vera said that because it was just like, well, we're going over there anyway. I mean, if he takes out the bitch for me, that's fine. So I don't have to do it. Oh, he's not doing it. Yeah, I know. But I'm just saying, possibility. Anyway, we're already going over there. I already have dirt on her. I had to think of a scenario where he would, where a, a high ranking criminal boss would go, why do I need a bunch of smucks to do my stuff? when I because have like because we kicked your own schmuck's ass basically and I was like well that's probably because they kicked one of their one of his high ranking lieutenant's ass and I was like that's a reason I don't know man 
That's not how the mafia works. Just saying. I know. He would have probably kept tracks on you. He would probably like, you know, kept a little know, bit of maybe a Maybe in a way, like you have something I want. You do this or else. And that's kind of, well, you do this or I take your shit instead of I take your life. <laughs> so, <laughs> maybe a little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He's not, he's not necessarily a mafia. He's more like, he's a businessman. That's why I said he's kind of like, I know not everybody watches Critical Role, like gentlemen. Like, the gentleman will give you like one free pass. Maybe I don't kill your ass. But, mm -hmm. like, value for value. But you don't make good on the value, then I kill your ass. Think of it this way. <laughs> if he would have kicked you guys out and held your shit, you guys would have tried to find him and he would have been like, oh, are you now willing to work with me? Yeah. I'll give you back your shit. Nope. So it's one of those things where it's like, he is a very smart businessman who has bargaining chips. He's always looking for bargaining chips. That's why he didn't tell Tom where Balefrost was. Cause he's like, I already put him away. I know who you're looking for. No, you're not finding him. Yeah. Like the two most important things was like my focus and my armor. Everything else could be like replaced. I, I had to <laughs> think of that on the fly. Cause I was like, all right, you definitely can cast spells. But I was like, wait a minute, uh, sorcerers need components sometimes they definitely need like uh arcane focuses a warlock i think is the only one who doesn't require that uh bards can definitely shape and weave arcane via their voice and i was like what about clerics and druids well, well warlocks is because they make their pack no yeah and i was like well clerics it says to cast your divine spells you need to use a, or you have to have a cleric focus which you've been using your pendant and i was like well that's gone what do you do punch people in the face. If, if anyway. he did that role, he would try to bring him to justice. <laughs> you can definitely try. I, I'll just say this. The shadow is, is as, or maybe more powerful than Lily. Oh, well, I like him. I, it's okay. In comparison of, you know, asshole to asshat over there, I still like him more than But her. he's not going to get off his seat. Nah. Why do that? He's got underlings. But that's that's the shadow. So you guys have are now sleeping right now, and of course we'll go ahead and follow up with not only like messages you want to send, we'll also go through with Roly what he wants to do. <laughs> we'll see how well he does that, and then we'll begin the story from there. Temple who had what in that bet? <laughs> I had she. He was gonna read to her. Oh no, brown cow. <laughs> No, not like that. Oh. <laughs> He's not an idiot. Oh, well, he acts, <laughs> he sometimes acts like one. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna be I like, think he can read basic sense. Oh, no, he definitely can. Yeah. Broly's like, well, I have to. I want to order that drink. I have to know what Yeah, it's... you can read the menu. Yeah. <laughs> what is chickpeas? No, he's a farmer. He would know what chickpeas are. So, uh, a, a class that I really, really wanted to talk about. I didn't expect to talk too long about the last session, but hey, here we are. Uh, is the Warlock. I'm not going to go through every single uh, ability that the Warlock gets, but some, some really, uh, sort of, really cool things that Warlocks do get. And sort of to summarize what a Warlock actually is. So, Warlocks, unlike... Uh, a cleric, well, much kind of like a cleric. There's a bit of a difference. A darker one. Darker one. Uh, a cleric, yeah, hex. Um, warlocks are very much. They 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 sign a pact with an outwardly being. A god. Outwardly. Outwardly being a god from, <laughs> uh, from like a fourth dimension, something beyond the astral sea. Or maybe they make a deal with a lich or some sort of undead creature that has a lot of power. Or maybe they make a deal with an ar archfey, you know, someone from the fey realm who's like all about chaos and freedom. They get a lot of options. I mean, even with uh, uh, Xanathar's and, and Tasha's, they, they're, they've expanded on it now. You can make a deal with a devil. You can make a deal with a demon. I mean, I made one with a serpent. You can make a deal <laughs> with a sea serpent with a a a, 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 a a underwater being, which is what yours was, which was like an underwater like monstrosity. 
or entity, something unknown within the deeps. Something what supposedly common in this campaign? Wait, what? Isn't that in this too? Is it? I thought it was with our tattoos. Oh, you don't know. <laughs> Vera doesn't I know. Do, I, but I did. Ever do. does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you you can cl uh, cross class into uh, a warlock of the deep. I think that was one of the the classes that, or the subclasses I gave you option without having any prerequisites. Yeah, but you have to choose it when it's time to level. Exactly. So it's a very. I thought about it and I was like, "What's a really cool thing to do?" I don't. That's a that's a whole mess. That's I was like, I'm not ruining it. Don't worry. Vera does no clue. Yeah. But I'm just like, I'm like Aberdo. So warlocks are weird. I actually like them. I always said I was never gonna play one, and then I was like, "No, I like this. It's a lot to, it's a lot." <laughs> but... Warlocks are weird because uh, they are a mixture of really awesome stuff, but they're also limited. They obviously don't have that many spell slots, so when they do cast spells, it has to be very, very choosy. It's like a good balance though, because it's like one of the few, few classes that get their spells back at a short rest. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, "Fucking, you gotta." Long rest, and then if you, you hope you get the long rest, <laughs> you can get your spells back. And warlocks, I think, are the only classes that get sub feats by by the ways of eldritch evocations. So let's go and read out a little bit what you do get. I feel uh, like fucking I forgot what I named her. Cass. Cass. That's really OP even at that level. But yeah, they, they get pretty crazy. She had so much fucking shit. I was just like. <laughs> So I guess to summarize when it comes to spells for Warlocks is that they get like very limited spells. I think even like at, I think they get their max number of spell slots by level 17 and that's only four. So they can cast four spells before they have to take a short rest. Mm. However, whenever they cast a spell at, you know, regardless of, you know, it what goes level, to a higher level. It though. is whatever the max is. So let's that's say- That's one thing I don't like sometimes because it's just like what if i don't want to cast it at the max no you have to <laughs> but i think it maxes at level five so whatever you whatever spell you cast it it caps at level five so if you cast a level one uh what's a level one spell that's pretty good for a warlock or in general in general cure wounds they well i guess i guess celestial warlocks do get that cure wounds I yeah, let's cure say, wounds is level one. Yeah, it let's, is. Say, let's say you use a celestial warlock and you cast cure wounds. It's immediately cure wounds at level five. You have no choice. It's 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 high. Uh, so a few things that you do get. Uh, one thing that everyone should know when you do pick a warlock, they get access to the Eldritch Blast uh, cantrip, which is pretty much known as the best cantrip out there in D and D. Well, because it upgrades the higher you go, like you can do more hits. You can do yeah. It's almost like a rapid fire at a point. Get high enough, yeah, the Eldritch Pew Pew. Uh, and then this is sort of where it comes all it all comes together, which is your Elvage evocations, which you get at level two. And uh, you get to choose more evocations as you start to level up. And those are like mini feats. Uh, depending on what you choose, you can have like what um, um, Steve is saying, you can have Devil Sight, which means you have 120 feet of dark vision, even through magical dark vision. Uh, you can choose... Is that what I chose? I don't remember. I know I didn't do the detect magic thing. You can have the ability to cast detect magic at will without without lo losing a spell slot. So you could just... It's on. <laughs> I know, we're always bo bothering Steve in, the other, in our other campaign. Hey, can you look... Yeah, just turn it on and you're, you're good. Uh, there's also, like, uh, you can cast mage armor. So maybe you're not... You're kind of a squishy... Uh, a warlock, you're a squishy caster. Well, you can go ahead and put a bit of spell into you, and you can cast mage armor at will. Um, and there's there's so many other small feats that you can get. I think you can, you can cast like false self at will. Um, you can read all languages. There's like a devil's like comprehend type of thing. I'm uh, know what she has now. And then at third level, you get a pact boon. You get a pact boon. And pact boon is basically like your pa patrons like. Hey, listen, you're doing really good. You're doing really good. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a bonus this year. I'm gonna give you a Christmas bonus. 
You don't get to die. You don't get to die and you're doing really good. I'm going to go ahead and promote you. And they give you a pack boon and they get you get to choose. You can either get packed to the chain, pack to the blade. I, think um, I picked pack to the tome. Pack to the tome. There's also pack of the star. There's more somewhere in these books here. But there's a more packs you can choose. And they all have their little mini feats. I didn't show you guys the dice. Hold on. I just want to show them because it reminds me of warlocks. Hold on. Will you be able to make it? I think I can. <laughs> this you... is a sight to behold. Yeah, well, they can't see you, which is great. No, I know. Hold on. You know where? Yeah, you know where the thing is. Question is if it'll focus. Probably not. Move it back a little bit, and then let it focus, and then see if you can move it in. You can see it from there. Okay, there you go. <laughs> It's got like an Eldritch eye in there. Yeah. And I got myself my bag. And you got nebula I, dice. I got a nebula die. <laughs> I, lo I love Star. I love outer space. I like making my characters out of that. But I think honestly, there's like different things you can do with like boons. Like you can do. I have chunks. Um, I think one of the cool things is you can, you can do like Pact of the Blade and you can always have a weapon ready. Well, we're so chunky Blake and shit. I like how he gets up here. A, hey, no scratching. My favorite warlock, and I think honestly, I don't think it'll ever change, is is the genie warlock. Uh, I know one of the past NPCs characters, uh, Edward, was that. He was an he was definitely a unearth arcana warlock, uh, genie warlock, because that was before it was official in Tasha's. So he has different abilities than a normal, than a an official warlock should have. I would love to play a, a genie warlock in the next campaign. I would love that. Oh, maybe you can play it in a, the one shot that you've been bugging me to do. Yes, please, <laughs> please, please make a one shot so I could play in. I want to play a character. It'd be your wedding present. Oh, <gasps> I'd love that. Your wedding anniversary. That would be great. <laughs> With torture, I'm gonna have to go. Through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And it doesn't have to be that long. Like, I know when we did uh, the showroom, we ended it early. Yeah. Hey, sometimes you just gotta end it early. You didn't end it too early. I ended it like, like 15 four... minutes early. Did I end it like 30 minutes early? Oh, all right. By the time you guys were done. You must break him. Yeah, I think I'm meaner than Mike. I feel like Mike has more Leroy, leeway. Like, I wouldn't Leroy give Leroy Jenkins. Yeah, more Leroy Jenkins. Remember we named that bird that at Disneyland? Leroy. Why did we name him that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I feel like Mike is very much like, oh, they have a level. I mean, this is what, because there's like a generator he uses, and then like he makes his, you know, big bads his weird way, and I stay out of it. But uh, um, yeah, I feel like I'd be meaner. So I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna, instead of going <laughs> through all the books, I'm gonna go ahead and just cheat a little bit. And, but um, I feel like I would want you guys to be like maybe level six if I was gonna be mean. Ooh, yeah, be mean. So, a level six? Yeah. Hell yeah. I no, honestly, I, I probably wouldn't play a warlock for that. I would love to play a warlock in a full campaign. Mm. So it would probably be like a Nick thing when we're done with with Thomag. Um, like if you ever wanted to do a new thing. The next level of Tomb Annihilation. Oh no. <laughs> No, I wanted. I want to play a, a genie warlock in a full campaign that's going to level twenty, because then I would love to use all their abilities and powers and actually have like a RP moment. Because there's a really cool thing that a genie warlock gets is that at level ten, they have a thing called bottle respite. They get that at level one, and bottle respite. What that means is that for a certain amount of time, you can you can uh, teleport into your bottle to your genie bottle and you can rest. It has like cushions and like a couch and a bed and you can just relax for a bit and you can actually rest in there. I feel like that's the, like a fuck you to like the rest of the world. You're just like, I'm going to take a nap. But they could break your bottle. Oh, and then you come out? Yeah, then you're sort of forced out. <laughs> um, but at level 10, you can bring in your friends. I remember. So you can Wait, just- no, I don't remember. So you can do this thing where you're like, hey guys, um, we don't really have a place to, we don't really have a place to stay. Let's find a good place for our bottle to stay and we'll just sleep in there. And did we do that? I think we did a couple of times. For who? With Edward. No. I thought we did. That was an official genie warlock. Oh. Yeah. Uh, the, the Unearthed Arcana warlock didn't have that. Oh, uh, gotcha. 
so we were just staying in that tower. Thing. You're just staying in this tower. Um, but uh, warlocks have the ability to, you know, like if you think you, t I think if you take uh, the the tome uh, pack boon, you can learn like certain spells. And one of them I was going to choose was going to be invisible servant. Mm. So you choose invisible servant, and you tell, hey, uh, servant, uh, I'm going to go back in the bottle. Go ahead and just carry my bottle and follow these guys. So essentially, you can just have like a little invisible guy carrying you, and then I mean, don't some... walk into any trees. Don't go just to anything. Follow scary. Frankie. Follow these guys. They know where they're going. All right. <laughs> Carries your bottle. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Someone has to watch. Well, that's what invisible servant will do. Be like, hey, Frankie. Um, all I want you to do is just take the dodge action. You know. Which one do you have over there? Oh, you want to do, do the Xanathars or players? I think we don't have the monster manual, huh? No. We're missing. No. I was like... Pack to the Tome. That's it for more spells. I was like, I wonder how close to Cerberus I could actually get. Oh, I think you could... You could honestly look it up on your phone. There are custom, you know, uh, stat blocks that people do. You have, know, like, little Muppet paws, dude. It's the cutest thing ever. So, Warlocks have the following subclasses they can choose from. Archfey. Celestial. Fathomless. Don't you dare sully it with your extreme idea. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if we're gonna do underworld, I love Greek fucking mythology. We're gonna do underworld. Like, I'm gonna have a fucking pet dog with three ass heads. <laughs> it's just like, that's what I want. Hold on, I'm gonna look up Cerberus 5e stats. And he's gonna be amazing. <laughs> Someone at D&D Wiki made a custom made Cerberus. He's got close to 200 HP. It's kind of a beast. Well, he's gonna be my pet, and then you just don't piss off. He has my pet. <laughs> he has multiple attacks. He can make attack. He has multi attack. The servers can make as many bite attacks as it has heads. You can also chop off the heads, so you can actually start to kill the servers that way. Uh, and then it has a bunch of other abilities. Here's a here's a picture of it. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> But no, I think I wouldn't play a, I wouldn't play a warlock for your thing, my my genie. I feel like all you bastards are gonna just be a bunch of tieflings. <laughs> so you're fire resistant. <laughs> no, no, I'll, I'll play a character that's fun. I have a lot of fun characters. Neat. <laughs> Dude, Steve, I didn't know you were blue this whole fucking time. I well, We've remember when you first saw that? For yeah. Years, and I don't even think these guys know. I don't know why I said it so funny. Years. <laughs> Years? Years. You didn't um, know for years. I don't even know if they knew before I joined that you were blue. I just thought he was red. Well, I never asked you. Like, I didn't know what type of tiefling you were. Because, like, some, like, have resistance due to the color they are. Or different types of resistance due to the color they are. Maybe. I don't remember. So that's why I was just like... I remember I always just thought you were red. And then I asked you and you were like, I'm blue. Yeah, you're like, I'm a dark blue. I'm like, really? Huh. <laughs> so, all right, what else you get? Archface, Celestial, Fathomless, Fiend, the Genie, Great Old One, Hexblade, and Undying. Pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> uh, when it comes to Archfey, a lot of what that the subclass ability gives you are like anti-charm and anti-fear. You cannot be, you're almost like an elf at that point, and you can actually reverse charm. Yeah, I can't be put to sleep. We really can't be put to Magically. sleep. Magically. Yeah. Yeah. I can go to sleep. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, when you got knocked out by the uh, the shadow or the uh, the scorpions. Yeah, that's why I was like, wait, wait. It's not sleep. It's a knockout. It's like a, a like a going unconscious. Yeah, well, that makes sense. But that's why I asked. I was like, wait, did they just fucking put us to sleep? Because I can't be put. To sleep. <laughs> I'm still waiting for a moment to sort of role play that out where someone tries to put you to sleep and you're like nope and i'm like what do you mean no oh shit i'm just gonna tilt my head at you <laughs> uh, -uh. uh next one is celestial celestial is pretty fun because you actually get a lot of boosts when it comes to healing you actually are almost like a cleric at that point so you have like powerful heals and uh i think you do get some bonuses from that fathomless we talked about that is almost like having Fathomless, I kind of contribute to almost having like a, a spiritual weapon always at the ready. Oh, yeah. 
Because you just get like this ethereal. Mm -hmm. Well, we flavored it that it's like a serpent. Just yeah. come out and <laughs> whack you. So I, I like the idea that the Fathomless is almost like, now you have a spiritual weapon. A little more clericish, but you know, pretty good. The Fiend, um, I think you do get like resistance to fire. Uh, I think there's a few. I don't think the Fiend is pretty good. I don't know if I like the Fiend. <laughs> Uh, Steve says Hexblade. When you reduce a hostile creature to zero points, you gain temporary hit points equal to your charisma modifier plus your warlock level. That's it? Okay. Dark One's Luck. Starting at sixth level, you can call upon your, your patron to alter fate in your favor. You can make an ability check or saving throw. You can add a d10 to your roll. And then Fiendish Resistance, you, became, you become resistance to fire damage. And then uh, 14th level is sort of the same for everyone with just different flavoring. That's okay. That's actually what uh, Masato is. It's okay. I like Nick's character. He got to be creepy for once. The G I still think is the best one, but I already talked about enough of it, so I'll move on. Actually, no, I'll talk about one thing that the genie gets that I think is fucking amazing. Uh, let me see, I think it's 14th level that you get it. Yes, 14th level. You get the thing called Limited Wish. Limited wish. Uh, you can speak your desire to your genie vessel, requesting the effect of one spell that is sixth level or lower from any class, and you get to cast oh, it. Oh yeah, I remember you were telling me about that. It's such a badass thing. It's like I want to cast fireball at sixth level, genie, and they're like, yeah, sure. Here you go. Yeah, go ahead and do it. Have fun. Or it's like. I want to cast, uh, what's, what's, uh, I think, a teleport via plants is six level? Oh, transport via plants. Transport via, I want to transport via this, this tree. Yeah, sure. Yeah, go ahead and do it. There is, like, a little bit of a setback is that you have to roll d4 and you can't use the ability after d4 rests. So, if you roll bad. Like, you might, might not be able to use it for a couple days. Yeah, if you won't be able to use it. But, like, let's say you roll one, you're like, yeah, that's fine, I'll just take a long rest. It's the next day anyways. Like any other stupid ability. Boom. I mean, it makes sense if you sleep eight hours. It's like... Yeah, then I get to use it. Great old one. That is what uh, Rally says is. And he gets a lot of, like, mind abilities. You know, I get to connect my mind with yours. Or uh, I get resistance to psychic damage. Or, uh, you know, it's a lot of, like... you. Can I My mind is already fucked up by connecting with this ethereal individual from, like, another plane. This eldritch being. You can't do any more harm to my head. <laughs> pretty much. Hexblade is pretty badass. That is where you get a lot more. That's almost like you're becoming more of a face-to-face -face fighter warlock. You know, you get bonuses. You get to attack with your charisma instead. Um, I'm sure there's something else. Isn't that what Ford is? That's exactly what Ford is. Except they make fun of him and say Hexblade instead of Hexblade. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Starting at sixth level, you can curse the soul of a person you slay temporarily, binding them to your service. When you slay a humanoid, you can then cause its spirit to arise from the corpse of its specter. I think what? Steve did that the other day. What? Why hasn't he been doing this? He did. I thought uh, he did. Uh, Ford? No, not Ford. Uh, Rallys did this. Rallys can't do that. I thought he did. Oh, hey, Cindy. Hey. Right now we are talking about uh, our favorite uh, sell your soul to the devil class, the warlock. Um, I mean, it's not always the devil. No, it's not always the devil. <laughs> uh, the last subclass ability or uh, subclass that you can choose uh, is the undying. Undying are pretty, pretty cool because I think they get a lot of like, like zombie flavored abilities. So like, I think I'll go ahead and read a little bit. Uh, they get Among the Dead, which I just fucking closed. Damn it. <laughs> Among the Dead, you learn Spare the Dying Cantrip. Additionally, Undead... Uh, wait, what is this here? You have advantage on saving throws against any disease. Additionally, Undead have difficulty harming you. If an Undead directly targets you with an attack or a harmful spell, that creature must make a wisdom saving throw against your DC. On a fail, the creature must choose a different target. It's almost like you have a continuous sanctuary on you. Uh, for undead. Well. I have never been a caster in the current D&D. &D. 
It's pretty interesting. Oh, oh my god. Tina Bell. Thank you so much for following. I always fuck up the usernames, man. <laughs> uh, Defy Death is uh, another ability that you get as Undying. I always feel like that's a self-explanatory. Defy death. Defy death. <laughs> fuck your death. Yeah. Not today, Satan. You I regain, ain't done yet. You regain the number of hit points equal to 1d8 to your constitution modifier. Uh, let's see here. You can, let's see here. You gain the vitality when you cheat death or when you help someone cheat death. Oh, so when you spare the dying on someone, you get to give him extra hit points or yourself. Hmm. So it's like, fuck you, death. Oh, I got a bonus for it. I'm helping. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Boy. Like, I'm helping you, but I'm really helping me. <laughs> That's really how that is. I really kind of want to learn about this undying one now. Oh, great. Beginning at 10th level, you can hold your breath indefinitely. What the fuck? You can't, you don't need to breathe? You're a zombie. Uh, you don't require food, water, or sleep. Although you still require to rest to reduce exhaustion. Yeah, there was one in there that didn't require sleep after a certain level. What? You just Are you fucking kidding at me? Everybody as they... In addition, you age slower. For every ten years that pass. Yeah. Except your for body they ages don't... one year. They don't need food though. You are immune to being magically aged. You're a fucking vampire. Say, you're like a fucking lich. You didn't really do anything. Actually, vampires are considered undead. You could definitely make a, a pact with a vampire. That'd be cool. Halloween windshot. That's pretty good, man. <laughs> uh, and then at 14th level, you get a thing called Indestructible Life. When you reach 14th level, you partake in some of the true secrets of the undying. On your turn, you can use a bonus action to regain... What? On your turn, you can use a bonus action to regain hit points equal to 1d8 plus your warlock level. Oh, you can only use this feature once. So what if you're an elven warlock? In addition, if you put a severed body part in your uh, of yours back in place, <laughs> it reattaches. Hmm. Like a little- What? Well, my arm fell off. Hold on, let me just- what the fuck? <laughs> Put that back. Hold on, now I have to look at the other warlock subclass abilities. Asking you a question. What was the question? It says, what if you're an elven warlock? Okay, so if you're an elven warlock, that means... Well, elves don't generally need to sleep, they just need to meditate. So I would count this as you don't even need to meditate. Yeah, uh, I think it just negates it. Now. In addition, since you age one year every 10 years and elves i believe live up to like 300 or uh, i think up to five 500 or very long you could live up to five thousand years old yep you a vampire except you don't need to eat though jesus <laughs> christ you just, man you'd be walking down the street when your limb falls off you just um, put it back on <laughs> you could be a very old motherfucker at that you point you could be the fucking crypt keeper i don't i think maybe gnomes <laughs> live longer than than elves Oh, no, you got all the books. I think gnomes live up to 600 years. Ugh. Or 400 or something. I don't know. But, god damn, man. If you chose an undying uh, subclass for warlock, see. and you're immune to being magically aged, it's like, oh, well, we're going we're gonna to wait till this fucker really dies. Well, you're going to have to. <laughs> see. Damn. Elves can live up to 750. Oh, okay. And then gnomes can live up to 400. That's where I'm getting my thing. I'm guessing I'm right. Don't forget to put 5e so you know it's D&D. Oh. Should have. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Let's look at the... I gotta look at some of these things that I don't really I don't really know. Uh, like, the, like, I'm very interested in the warlock. It says 350 to almost 500. Ooh, okay. They can, they can sort of party it up with elves. Uh, I'm not familiar with lawful good or neutral good warlocks, though. I think mm. I was neutral, wasn't I? I can, I mean... Because I didn't want to be evil, I just said I was neutral. How do you make an, a good warlock without being celestial? Because I feel like that's going to be, like, a cop-out. How do you make coins? <laughs> <laughs> How uh, do you make a good fiend warlock? I've never been a fiend. 
What if, um... Actually, I have it. But go on. Oh, no, you go first. I gotta think. What if your fiend... What if your your the, the devil that you signed your, your pact with is kind of a troll? And he hates a certain god. And he's like, the god uh, of healing, I hate this fucker. So you know what I'm gonna do? You're gonna be my patron, and I want you to do everything you can. Get bottles of potions, you know, go together with another cleric, and just heal people in the name of me. Heal people in the name of me. Be Fuck that person. Do good if you have to. Just fuck that stupid cleric or that god. <laughs> That'd be such an awesome way to do a fiend warlock who's- you. That way you get to be a good character. You're like, yeah, I'm gonna help this village. Everyone! I am helping this village in the name of Beelzebub! <laughs> sorry, sorry neighbors downstairs. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Sorry neighbors. We don't worship the devil. I don't worship the devil. <laughs> <laughs> They're all like... But think about it. I mean, that's one way you can make a, a, a devil cleric, or a de devil warlock who's like, fuck that person. How dare you do good? Oh yeah, you're gonna do good? I'm gonna Wouldn't it be you. good for a warlock to heal zombies? If you're an undead, uh, Warlock, who kind of favors zombies, that'd be kind of good. <laughs> what if you were going around, because you know how clerics can, instead of destroy undead, they can turn undead, and then he, he was like, turn undead, and then you're behind him and you're like, turn back undead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 come back, please. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, God. Hmm. That's just being a little shit, though. That really isn't being good. The one I gave. That's just funny. I would have to think about it. That would. That's definitely a, a, a scratch. Unless you were like being an Brain imposter, scratcher. like you said you were doing it in the name of so and so, but really you weren't. Hmm. And like your whoever you made the pack with was aware of it, and then you just told everybody, "Yeah, you got healed in the name of so and so." Oh. <laughs> Do you thank me? Yes. Well, I'm an extension of the devil. <laughs> or I'm an extension of Vecna. Or what if you, like, heal them, but since you heal them, like, a portion of their soul is owed to your patron. Well, you know who's really doing this a good way? A good way? Mm. Ford. Ford is a, a Hexblade warlock who signed He doesn't even a... like his warlock, though. But that's a good way of playing it. Maybe you signed a, de a deal when you needed him most. And now you're like, I don't really trust my patron. Yeah, well now he's multi-class though. He's oh, like yeah. paladin and warlock. I mean, that's a great way to also play a good warlock who has like these powers of the undead or is the powers of, the, of, a, of a fiend or, or something along those lines. I need Play to set up my cat. coins in my channel. I never know how to do this. It took me a full day to do that. I think one of the cats just broke something in the kitchen. Oh, did they? Yeah. I heard something. I heard a thud. Oh no. But yeah, I mean, warlocks are very interesting. Uh, let's look over some of my fa favorite invocations. Evocations. Evocations. Words today, huh? I know. <laughs> I was telling Amber today that, man, t t this Friday has been the... It's been a day. It's been the worst, not the worst, but like the most energy draining Friday. Yeah, I had two coffees. By the way, you know what a fiend can get at level 14? Coffee. An ability called Hurl Through Hell. That's pretty cool. That's pretty badass. You want to know what it does? Starting at 14th level, when you hit a creature with an attack, you can use this feature instantly to teleport the creature through the lower planes. The creature disappears and hurls through a nightmare, nightmarish landscape. At the end of your next turn, the creature returns to its space that it was previously occupied or near another unoccupied space. And so it takes can... 10d10 psychic damage as it reels from its horrific experience. So you can send it through the circle of hell. You can see you're you're a scorpion from Mortal Kombat and you're like down to the outer realms. God damn, that's metal, man. That's so metal. I just like I know we explained sorcerer points, but I just We'll I... cover sorcerer in a new in another. No, I know, but I'm just like that's D and D, math. Yeah, it's, it's very much math. It's very much math. So, considering somebody that hates math, likes D and D, it's just like fuck math. 
so there's a couple of evocations here. Obviously, there's a bunch of like Eldritch Blast bonuses. Like you can push people, you can pull people, you can do extra damage with your Eldritch Blast because Eldritch Blast is sort of exclusive to Warlock. Um, you can talk to beasts whenever you want. <laughs> you mean you're not gonna mess with Rallies? I'm not anymore? gonna mess with the Warlocks anymore. <laughs> you know what? Since we're talking about Warlocks, in character we won't know until Steve hits level 14. Are we level 14? Not yet. Not yet. Let's take, a, let's take a let's take a look what the uh, the pack to the old one gets at level fourteen. I, I think if we get out of the buckle that we're essentially we're in right now, maybe <laughs> a a great old one warlock at level fourteen gets the following: create thrall. At fourteenth level, you gain the ability to infect a humanoid's mind with an alien magic of your patron. You can use your action to touch an incapacitated humanoid. <laughs> no! Uh, that creature is then charmed by you until it you uh, until you remove curse spells cast on it. The charmed condition, uh, the charmed charm condition uh, when it when that remove curse, it's removed. I mean, Steve, dude, we both fucked up though. The dice hated us both. Like one, she was resistant to your shit, and then the fucking elemental mist with a plus eight. I rolled a one, man. Like the you fuck. Can, <laughs> you can communicate telepathically with the charmed creature as long as it exists, as as long as the two of you exist in the same plane of existence. So not only is it uh, charmed, but you're also like you can give commands to your charmed person. There is no like it doesn't end. There is no end. It's just, now you have it. Now you have a brain parasite in someone's mind and you're like, hey, we're friends, right? And they're like, yeah. Yeah, you're my friend. Because they're charmed by you. So it's like, yeah. Uh, that's like some of my favorite spells though. They crack me up. Like hold person. I know fucking Cindy hates hold person, I but just... I, I love hold person. <laughs> you know what the, the really big problem about this? Is that for elves, when you're getting charmed, you get advantage on the saving throw. However, there is no saving throw. Wait, does Cindy get advantage this whole time and she keeps getting charmed? No, that she's getting spelled. Oh, she's okay. getting hold person. That's that's a that's a magical that's a casting of a spell, not a not an effect putting being put on someone. Um, but think about it. If you're incapacitated, you go to sleep or you get knocked out, Steve will run to you and go, Buddy, when you wake up we're gonna be so good friends. And then walks away. I don't think, and it doesn't say that you can do this. I'm going to train against being charmed. I don't see here that you are limited to one person. Like it doesn't say like if you cast it again or use this ability again, it ends. I don't see, I'll I have mean, to look I'm it up. I sure there is. I'll have to look it up. But technically, he can go to each sleeping person. I mean, as far as I'm understanding it, again, we'll have to look it up. But he can each go to each... Hey, uh, Kara. Does this work, though? Because we'll we be don't friends. really sleep. We just meditate. Incapacitated. Oh. Because I'm like, the only one that sleeps is fucking you. Quinn. You can go to Quinn and go, buddy, we're going to be good friends. <laughs> we go to the end, buddy, we're going to be good friends. You know, once we make, per day. We make fun of you because you can't see in the dark and you actually need to sleep. But then you can communicate with them. You're like, hey... Uh, go ahead and pick me up a, a potion of healing, and the guy would go, Sure thing, buddy. Yeah, you got it. You got it. I'll get you. You're my friend. Great old ones, man. <laughs> Scary as fuck. I think you can wear coins because you're participating in the chat, right? Mm-hmm. There's also a little button that, that sort of slides in after you watch a certain amount of time. But yeah, imagine that. Fucking yeah. scary. So... I think we're rounding it up, but yeah. Uh, let me see if Sanathar's guys has any, uh, I think I may have wrote, wrote, uh, sort of, I have them on my phone, so. I like this book. You like the cover. Mm. Honestly, I think those are the really cool ones. I like, I still like the genie. It's still my favorite. <laughs> I know, I need to play. Be nice to warlocks. <laughs> Wait until they used all their spells, then fuck them up. You know, because then they can't really, then they're just gonna do Elders Blast all day. 
Fathomless, which is the one of the new ones, I think is really cool. Yeah, I need to play her in an actual campaign instead of just the one shot. Fathomless gets an ability at level one called Tentacle of the Deep. You can summon a spiritual tentacle that strikes at your foes. You have a spiritual weapon. You owe, you have a you have a cleric's version of a spiritual weapon that is a tentacle. Or in my case, if I was going to make a a uh, Fathomless of the Deep person, it would basically be like an like a uh, like a like a an ice tentacle that was just like because I would make it I would make a, like an ice person uh, gift of the sea you get to swim fast great uh, <laughs> oceanic soul level six uh, you gain resistance to cold damage in, in, uh, in addition oh, yeah. when you merge <laughs> yourself she has that ability <laughs> when you fully submerge yourself uh, people can understand you. you can talk underwater yeah it's like a cheat of uh, what's her face iris at level six, you also get Guardian Coil. Your Tentacle of the Deep can now defend you and others. It can use its, it can impose itself in front of people, giving them, I believe, it can reduce the damage by one d six. I think it gives me like an added AC, no? No, no, it can reduce the damage to one d six. One d six if you're within ten feet of it. So if someone's about to strike you, it'd go <laughs> try to smack the sword. Yeah, mine was like a serpent head. Uh, tentacle of the Deep. Uh, you learn the spell of Ards of Black Tentacles. Uh, and let's say you can do it a number of times 14th level when you reach 14th level you can magically open a, tempo uh, a temporary uh, conduit uh, to the watery dimensions as an action <laughs> you can teleport yourself and up to five other willing creatures you can see uh, oh 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 watery destinations I'm sorry okay I can summarize this a little bit essentially you and your party Walk to the beach. Wait, I'm not born yet. Hmm? Steve, because he said, can't wait for the episode where Vera meets Iris. Because ours is like the prequel, right? What yes. we're playing right now. Yeah, I'm not born yet, dude. She's too young. She, I think you were the youngest. Yeah. I'm not even thought of yet. <laughs> I mean, your tribe's somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere out there. <laughs> so. I'm a baby. <laughs> this is what, think of it this way you and the party walking yourself to the to the beach and uh, there's a you want to go to let's see how far you can go yeah but by the time she's that old she'll be able to control her hair so she'll just look like a regular elf if she wants and there's a you could there's a uh, 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 an island a mile away and you don't have a boat you just start swimming or maybe you're thrown off a boat you and your party are thrown overboard while you're at sea, and you have to get back to your boat, and it's starting to, starting to drive away. Well, you know, everyone, let's get close here, and the water will shrink you down into basically a liquid form and project you. Oh, now we're bubbles. We've it already will, been clouds. <laughs> it says here, amid a whirl of tentacles, you all vanish and reappear. Oh, vanish. You don't even travel, you vanish. That's cool. Holy shit. Do you vanish and reappear within one mile. Oh, wait. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. It's even better. It doesn't. It's even better. Well, out with it. Okay. As an action, you can teleport yourself and up to five willing creatures that you can see within 30 feet. Amid a whirl of tentacles, you all vanish and reappear up to one, one mile away to, uh, in a body of water that you can see. Hmm. Oh, no, it is within, within one mile away that you can see, so, okay. Oh, that you've seen before. Oh, it's like tree stride. Yeah. It's like tree, it's like tree stride. Okay. Yeah, there's transport via plants, then tree stride. And there's uh, transport via water. <laughs> yeah, it's a great escape plan. That is a good point. You are you guys are fighting in a, you know, next to a pond, and you're just like, we gotta fucking go! <laughs> you remind me, I gotta ask Nick something. Uh, but yeah. I keep warning him. I hope he planned it out. <laughs> I really hope so. <laughs> I keep the, I've been d fucking warning the DM for several sessions. Man. We gonna go on a little trip, boys and girls. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amber has a Hail Mary motherfucker in her Wednesday call game. It. Does it have to be a body of water or any liquid? 
It has to be either a... Because it's body of water. It has to be a body of water. So in other words, it has to be something oh, large enough. Steve, you can stay there and deal with the bad guys if you don't want to go. <laughs> we're but about we're going to go, gonna go bye bye <laughs> Amber has a, an ability that she hasn't used yet that will definitely save our asses. Yeah. So I was like, you can stay if you want. Technically, I could have did it in the in the worm stomach and just left you guys there. And she's been, you've been prepping for this too. <laughs> All right, later, Cindy. Yeah, we're Bye, gonna, Cindy. we'll probably call it a, uh, a, a, you know, a stream here. I think we could take her to be honest. No, she's too high of a druid at this point. <laughs> Fuel, I challenge her to wear uh, an extra uh, an extra pair of reading glasses for the whole stream. You use reading glasses. Yeah, I well, it's just for the glare because my eyes strain. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can get this. Oop. The mic went bye bye. Oh, that's fine. Uh, I think you still have the little fluff though. Yeah. Somewhere in uh, your shut. No. no. It's somewhere there. I have, I have horrible vision. Yeah, I don't really need them. Because I just use them for the, the anti-glare. I'm really sorry, guys. You're going to hear a little bit of a fluff hitting the mic right now. There you go. Sorry about that. I'm going to go ahead and put you away. I just want to let you know that mom and dad... <laughs> I'm just going to put you away. Mom and dad love you very much, and you yeah. have a good day at school. Those are my glasses. <laughs> but that's like, I only use them at work. I'm, I'm now a reporter. Yeah. Tell me, what did the warlock do to you? Yeah, Mike... Mike and I trade. I don't have shit vision. Mike does. I have shit vision. Goddamn. Sucks. His glasses hurt my eyes when I put them on. By the way, Fuel, thank you so much for the biddies. I should be thanking you for that. <laughs> Seven biddies in total. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, no, I won't wear his. His will give me a fucking migraine and then I'll be in do you wanna, do you shit wanna, of a trouble. Just, just, I have to clean mine, by the way. You're blind as I a bat. I am blind as a bat. They already hurt. Oh, I already too. Look at that. You're and straining. They, they're dirty. Yeah, they are dirty. <laughs> because I wear them constantly. It, they get. They, I don't even try to see. I just want to close my eyes. <laughs> anyways, no, I'm not gonna do anything. That's we're not gonna do anything that's harmful for our own eyes. Thank you so much for the biddies. Regardless, please hang out with us. Um, so warlocks are pretty insane. Uh, I still have my favorite. Which do you have a favorite? I mean, I've only played the Fathomless, so... Is there anything that sounds super interesting? I'd want to play her more since I only played for the one shot. I only played one, one oh, time. Oh, Cass? Mm-hmm. I would change her backstory a little bit. Or we didn't really give her much. Yeah, we didn't give her much. I would more like add to it. Yeah. Man, fuel with more biddies coming in with two at a time. Thank you so much. We're actually going to be ending the stream soon, so that's not really a good challenge. Tell you what, why don't you hang out with us tomorrow? Uh, you get to get to see the main campaign go down. We have a guest star that we've, we've invited since last session, Tom from Astral Tabletop. Really great guy. I feel like he just likes playing classes that are, not classes, races that are red. <laughs> what did he play last time? Played a red dragonborn, a and red... now he's a red tiefling. He does, doesn't he? <laughs> I was like, interesting, another red thing. That's very, that's a good point. That's really weird. We're running out of red things. We're running out of red things. What else? I mean, a fire genasi is next. Oh well, yeah, you could be a fire genasi. That's all I can think about. Red is his power color. Yeah. I hate red. I cannot wear red. You wear maroon, and that took me 10 years to get you into a maroon shirt. All right, guys. Well, we've been stalling for enough. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Once again, we stream every Friday and Saturday. Fridays are 8 p.m. to whenever we feel tired. and uh, Or want food. Or want food. I kind of want food, right? Buds. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we stream 2 p.m. tomorrow, Saturdays. And then uh, Sundays we do one-shots every other month. The next one-shot we have coming up is in May on the 30th. Be no goblin. Gonna... I told Mike I was like, I want to be a goblin. And then I was like, I just realized I could be a dice goblin and have a little pack of dice. <laughs> yeah, everyone's the oh, next game is everyone's gonna be playing as goblins. And I have a little uh, little story for these little, little guys. So we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, so a lot of things are happening. 
and uh, if you haven't done so, check us out on social. We have a vote game where you guys get to you know participate and actually play okay. a character and potentially kill somebody. But you know, maybe kill someone. Who knows what's going to happen? <laughs> Depending on what people vote for, it may end soon. But we'll do another one. You got a tiebreaker last time. You had to roll a dice. I did. I did have to roll a tiebreaker. All right, guys. We'll check you uh, tomorrow. Nice. Join you at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Laters. We'll roll and get laid. Will Savannah steal stuff? <laughs> tomorrow. Laters. Bye.